Hey everybody, Mr. Taylor. Let's take a look today at how we find uh, equations of a trend line. So your objective for this lesson will be to write an equation in slope-intercept form for a trend line. You have one key, or should I say new uh, vocabulary, which is trend line itself, but I want to make sure that you know or that we review slope intercept form and the slope formula because we're going to use that in order to create the trend line if you don't mind. So the author tells us that you can use two points on a trend line to write. Now I want you to definitely be aware of what he's saying here. You can use two points on the trend line. On the trend line to write an equation in slope intercept form for the trend line. So this trend line is going to be, you remember we talked about earlier when we said that that these particular uh, points will cluster, either they are cluster around a point or they are cluster along a line. Well this particular line that they're going to cluster on will be this line that we we draw and we can do that with an equation or we can also draw this particular line and this line will will split pretty much our data we said we said it will split our data you know like well like points here points there let me make these a little bit larger for you points here point here point here maybe here, maybe here, and so on. So these partic this particular line will, will, will show us the association or the, actually the correlation. Either, either words are interchangeable depending on what, what uh, you will uh, be tested on. And it will just simply show that, that correlation. So we will, when we take this trend line, we'll draw this trend line. Now, as we go forward, you see something a little different with the definition of this trend line. What I mean by that, or how it's constructed, you will see that it will say the line goes through particular points. So you would pick two points of your, you know, let's just say that this was a point and here was a point. So you would pick these particular two points to uh, construct your, your trend line. But in the meantime, without them, we're just going to draw this manually and draw it between the two data, the, the sets of data, two data sets. Well, the author sort of walks us through it. And let's, let's take a look at his example. So it says the scatter plot and trend line shows the relationship between so what relationship is it going to show us? It's showing us a relationship between the number of chapters, which is on our x axis, and the total number of pages for several books. So it asks us to write an equation for the trend line. Trend lines have already been constructed. And they ask us, well, what is the equation of this trend line? What we're going to do with this trend line is we're going to try to find the slope. And remember, the slope formula says the second value of y minus the first value of y divided by the second value of x minus the first value of x. So here's what the author did. The author took the, took the trim line, the, the uh, slope formula, and he looked. And let me tell you exactly what he done. Here, he substituted 5 and 50. Now, you remember, just recall just a minute ago, I said that we would we could have started here at zero zero if we were just looking directly at the line but the author says okay we have points that this line literally goes through this line literally goes through here so that means that this point is on the line and this point is on the line you, you go back and think of a point is on the line it is part of the solution so if this point is on the line let's use it and let's use this point if it's on the line. So what the author did is he looked at five, let's look at the intervals, two, four, six. So this would be 
x is 5, and in here we have 20, 40, and this is halfway between 40 and 60, so let's call it 50. So he used the points 5, 50 as his first point. Now the next one, let's say if it would have been a point here, then he would have used that point, but he went all the way up here and said, okay, this is the next, next actual point that the line goes through, so he went up and, and said, let's use this point. And here he said it was 17 and 170. So if we say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and this is halfway here, so we can we can call it 17. And then here this is 140 and 160, and this is halfway, which would make it 170. So these are the two points that he used for uh, y2, y1, x2, and x1. He started here, so this would be his, uh, let's see, can I, can I help you out with this just a little bit, if that's possible. Don't want to run out of, uh, don't want to run out of time. So this would be our, uh, let's see, x1, and our y1 and up here would be our second value of x and our second value of y so this is what this is what he used to construct this formula I think that's a good idea if we label these points on this scatter plot so we'll know which one we're gonna now you could have easily labeled this x1 y1 and x2, y2. As long as you use them, we couldn't go up and say this is x1 and this would be, the y part would be y2. We couldn't do that. We have to keep them the same when we do our subtraction, just like the slope formula, and then we, we should be good. Okay, so let's let's try to hurry along here. So what he said now, let's find, well, let's let make sure that we see what he did. He, he, entered, he substituted 170 which is the y value for y2 minus y1 value, which was 50. And then he divided that by the second value of x, which is, we said, 17, minus the first value, which is here, we said was 5. So then he was able to get 120 over 12, and he simplified and got 10. Uh, his answer was 10. Okay, so let's move on now. So this is where we stand. So we could have taken, uh, since we have 10, we could have used point slope. But I like this formula. I like taking the slope intercept form and, and substitute it. So what he did here is he used the first value. He used 5, 50. And, and this is very, I mean, it's, it's very simple to do. You know, as he said, that y, the y value was 50, 5 comma 50. So y was 50. You, you just saw for your slope, which was 10, and x is 5. So you substitute those in. Notice you did not have a b. So you're solving a literal equation. You're solving for b. So what we do, we say 50. So then now you're going to do your multiplication, 10 times 5 is 50, and plus b is equal to 50. So we know here that the next thing to do to get b alone is to do the inverse, which is this is a plus 50, so let's subtract 50 from both sides. We can't just subtract it from this side without subtracting it also from this side, and that gives us that b is equal to 0. So now all we got to do is come down and use our slope-intercept formula, the same one we used up here, and say, okay, well, y must equal to 10, which is the slope, times x, and we got 0 for b. So that tells us that our trend line equation is y equals 10x. We can drop the 0, and we know that this is a direct variation. And if we look at the, go back and look at the graph, we'll see that the graph does run through, if we know direct variations, 
there we go. It runs right through zero zero, or it starts to zero zero. So it 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 our our equation correlates with what the graph looks like. Okay. So what I need you to do is go ahead and stop the video here and tell me what type of association does the scatter plot show, or what type of correlation. Remember, association correlation is the same identical thing. So you want to tell me whether it is. Uh, linear, which we could see as a straight line, whether it is increasing or decreasing or, or whatever. What is the meaning of the slope in this situation? So what do 10 mean? Because that's what we said the slope was. And then what is the meaning of the y-intercept? And remember that the y-intercept, we're starting at 0, so the y-intercept is 0. What do that mean? Okay? And when you're done, just come back. After you finish that, then what I want you to do is look at number six. Number six gives us a scatter plot and a trend line, and it acts us, what it tells us, it shows the, the number of rainy days in a month and the number of umbrellas that sold at maybe Walmart, something. Uh, and it acts us to uh, write, an e write an equation for the trend line. Now, here, if you notice, the line does not go through any particular point. So what you want to do is look at the trend line, see where it began. It began at the origin, which is 0, 0. And then here, I'm looking at the very last point that it crossed, which was 10, 9. Use this for your y1, for your x1, y1, x2, y2, and see can you create the form. You can go ahead and stop it and come back when you're done. So we have two things that we need to do. Okay, number three, what type of correlation or what type of association does the scatter plot show? Well, if we go back and look at it, we're looking at the very first one that we did, that's going up and to the right, going up and to the right. So when it goes up and to the right, it is positive, so it's a positive association. If you don't mind, I'm just going back and forth. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of the slope in this situation? So we said that the slope was 10. So if we go back and look at the graph. We, If the slope is 10, then we are talking about the number of umbrellas compared to, uh, well, I'm, I'm on the wrong one. Let's, let's not do that one. We're looking at uh, the number of pages compared to chapters. So what does the slope say? there's an average of 10 pages per chapter. I went at y to x. Then it says, what is the meaning of the y-intercept? Well, according to what I see, the y-intercept is 0. So apparently, no pages, no chapters. Okay, let's see what it says there. The number of pages in a book with 0 chapters is 0. Right? No pages, no chapters. Okay, let's keep going. Got about two minutes on this one. We, we will be fine. So now let's take a look at number six. So it says, look at this particular scatter plot. So again, remember I told you we first have to find the slope. That's the very first step. So zero, zero was my y, my y1 and my x1. I used zero, zero. Started, this is where it started. And then I went up and I see that the line, the last part that I see that the line goes through, and this is just a sample. This is just x is 10, y is 9, so then I'm looking at my x2 is 10, and my, uh, my y2 is 9. So I'm going to set them up. So I have 9 minus 0 divided by 10 minus 0, and I get a slope of 9 tenths. But I could have also used this, which is 1, 1, compared to uh, 10, 9, and I would have gotten 8 over 9. But when I, would, when I would put this in decimal form, I would get 0. 0.9. Here I get 0. 0.888888, and which will round off to 0. 0.9. So the slope would be very similar uh, using either one of those points. This is why the author, I want to take time and show you this is why he says that the arrow that the answers may vary and here's a sample answer okay writing these slopes this is mr. Taylor and hey and if you like this this eighth grade Texas concept uh, for this year and you haven't subscribed 
please do so. I'll talk to you soon.